this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can create an awesome particle and shimmer effect in your photos just like this using After Effects. Let's get started. What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can really bring your photos to life using this trick. Now if you are new here, I create videos all about how to increase your productivity on your Mac, iPad, and iPhone, so if that's something you're into, consider subscribing down below. Without further ado, let's jump into this video. Now the way we're going to be achieving this effect is by using a template from VideoHive.net called the Shimmer Motion Kit. Now this is actually a project by the same author from the last video I did on how to create a particle and smoke effect with the Sandstorm Motion Kit. The author was very generous in giving me a free copy of this project to mess around with and share with you guys, but this is what we're going to be using to create this effect. I'll put a link down below as usual. So once you've finished downloading the file, you can just unzip it there and then you'll see that we have two folders inside here. We have a Shimmer AE install and a Photoshop action. So basically that means that you can achieve the exact same effect using either software. So maybe if you don't own After Effects, you don't own Photoshop, maybe you don't know how to use one or the other, you can do the exact same thing. They provided templates for both and they even have support all the way back to Photoshop CS3, which is crazy. That was like before my time. But let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. You can see a demo of the effect we're going to be creating. And it's actually really easy to set up. It's a very similar process that we went through in creating the sandstorm effect in my last video. But the way that it works is that you add a panel to your workspace that looks like this. So you give your composition a name. I'm going to call this portrait since I'll use a photo of a person. And you can specify the composition size. So you can set this to HD or you can use the source dimensions if you don't know what you want to do and then just hit OK, and then you can choose your photo. And just like we did in the Sandstorm project, we'll have three different steps that we need to go through in order to set up the effect. In step one, you can just insert your source, reposition it wherever you want it. So I'm just gonna size this to the composition. You can even move it up a bit if you need to. And once you get it where you want it, you can simply click on step two, and this is where you're gonna actually highlight the part of the photo you want the shimmer and the particles to go around. So what we're going to do is hit Command-B on our keyboard. We're going to double click on that brush layer, and then we're going to make sure that the red alpha channel is selected on the bottom of our timeline. You want to make sure that this is set to 100%. And in terms of brush settings, you want to make sure the opacity and flow are set to 100%. Mode is normal, channels, alpha, duration, constant, and then all the brush dynamics are off. And then for the diameter, that's kind of up to you, but the angle is set to zero, roundness is set to 100%. Hardness is set to 0% and spacing is set to 25. Now if you don't see those panels inside of your workspace, just go up to the window tab at the top and make sure that they are checked. And from here, you can simply just highlight your object or the foreground of your photo that you want the particles and the shimmer to go around. So it is pretty much just a red blob, but that's all you really need to do for step two. And when we go to step three, we're actually just gonna do the same thing. So again, make sure your brush is all set to the same settings and then just highlight your object again. Now the reason you have to do this twice is that After Effects just needs to know what the foreground is. In this case, it's the person standing in the hallway. The hallway is our background. And then secondly, it just needs to know where to put the particles. Now one thing to keep in mind as you're going through step two and three is that your playhead is set to the beginning of the timeline. The reason is that it's actually setting keyframes throughout the whole composition. So if your playhead is set to one second or two seconds, somewhere not at zero, 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 then it's actually gonna be animating it as you're brushing. When you go to the beginning, it won't actually show that highlighted section and you'll have to do the whole thing again. So keep that in mind as you're going through these last few steps. But once you are done, you can skip to four seconds where that edit here marker is, and you'll get a preview of the effect. And one reason I really love these templates is that everything looks really cool as soon as you're done. There's not tons of tweaking you have to do right up front in order to get something that looks pretty cool. But just like we had in the Sandstorm project, we have three different control layers. We have the shimmer layer, we have the scene controller, extras, and then you can mess around with camera settings if you want, but I tend to leave that just as it is because that looks the best. So in the first layer, you can control things like the particle size, the opacity, and also the different ranges. You'll see that we have a couple different layers of particles. First, immediately around the object, we have these tiny particles around the shimmer. And then we have the majority of the particle, 
particles. And then we have the majority of the particles in focus, and then there are a couple out of focus, and so those are the two different ranges for the inner and outer. And you have full control over the opacity and how much it's actually generating. So for example, if I went to the particle amount and I increased this to something like 60, you would see that immediately there would be an increase in particles around the foreground. Now the scene controller layer is really setting things like the colors and the different background blurs and tints, and you have a ton of control again. Now by default, it's applying the color one filter. You do have actually 10 different options. I think the first one looks the best, but obviously you can adjust this depending on your scene. But one thing I don't like about these filters is how intense it looks, but what's nice is you can actually control the opacity. So I do like to use these in moderation, kind of like a LUT, I set it to something like 50%, and then it looks a little bit more natural. Now again, you can spend as much time as you want tweaking all of these settings, but you can see how cool the effect looks with just a couple of minutes of work. Now if we go to the render folder, you'll see we have five different compositions, and these are the different video templates we can export our photo into. So in the hit impact, it looks something like this. You'll notice we have this colorful moving background, and you can actually control those colors. If you bring up the background controller, you can set those five different colors to something that matches the photo. So we have this kind of tan color, which doesn't really match the photo too much. So I could pick up that eyedropper tool, maybe pick the yellow in her scarf, and then pick another color and maybe pick the blue, and you can see it's starting to match the photo a little bit more. The second template is the in loop out, so it just kind of loops through the effect and then goes back out. The loop composition is pretty self-explanatory. For the reveal, we have an effect that looks something like this. And then lastly, for the time remapping composition, you have the effect that comes in, but then it kind of reverses itself out really suddenly at the end, which is a pretty cool look. So that's pretty much all you have to do in order to use this template and to get this awesome look on your photos. I really think this project, as well as the Sandstorm template, are a really cool way to bring your photos to life. You know, maybe you have a photo that you're gonna post to Instagram or share it somewhere online and you really want it to stand out. You could use one of these effects in a video format and people will be really intrigued. It kind of fits along that trend of parts of a photo that are moving, which I'm definitely gonna be doing a video on very soon. But it's just something different that catches people's eyes and it kind of engages them a little bit more. So guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to like this video and comment down below what effects you're using on your photos currently. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.